Well, here we are again. Hello, everyone. And apparently we are at video number nine. And <laughs> again, I'm very surprised that we got this far. Uh, I didn't expect there to be like so many. Anyway, uh, in our previous video, we've already finished all the Garland Mod sections. We finished uh, the anima fight. There was the solo duty that was very, very annoying. And uh, the Xenos body swap <laughs> happened. Anyway, we made it to the moon. We made it to the moon. See? And it is freaking beautiful so pretty up here and i should also know that the the music is so trippy it, it reminds me of um amarang and i don't know if it's just like the the immerse uh, audio game pack in in effect but man it sounds so good <laughs> the the music is just absolutely trippy all right, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and jump right back in. And we are supposed to talk to big friend over there. An ancient one. You've probably, you probably recognize them from Amarok. And if I had to make a guess as to who this is, this would be, uh, I forgot what his name is. Uh, Hydolithus? Hydolithus or something like that. Big friend. Big friend. <laughs> so, let's hop right to it. I... I... Hello, Sandfox. I return. I must return. Why? And apparently... <laughs> this is what happens. Oh no, I'm silenced. <laughs> oh my god, seriously? I did not expect this. I expected the dialogue. Come on, you were supposed to be my friend. What the hell is this? Lingering grief. That already does not bode well. Have I mentioned like that the the previous section was pretty heavy? <laughs> Let me just lower the volume in my ear. Okay, there we go. Okay, I killed it. Home. I want. I need. Please don't spawn enemies again. Hey, wait! You asked me to talk to you! Come back! You mustn't touch. Touch what? In cerulean halls, find me. So that one, huh? Fuck. <laughs> I hate it when I forget to do that. Alright, since we still cannot fly again. Uh, alright. In Cerulean Halls, find me. Very well. Off we go. Okay. Uh, the Watcher's Palace. Oh, this is... Wow! Can I go up there? Oh, wow. Look at this. Oh, this is so pretty. Are these... Um... Oh! Holy... What? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, okay. I 
And are all these like uh shit, I forgot the name of the material, the thing on Louis Swass uh staff. White I forgot the name of the crystal. Sorry. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I guess all right, let's do what we were told to do. Let's wait here. And it's a it's an ancient one-sized chair. No steps echo through this looming spire save your own, but you nevertheless sense a presence above. Okay, so go up. I really should just wait for the prompts to go up there. I'm sorry, I got excited. So up we go. <clears throat> what are all these things on the wall? The Watcher. Apologies. I have been pre preoccupied for quite some time. Am and am out of practice at conversation. Ever since the moon was created by Hydaelyn, I have served as an integral part. I am the Watcher. I am responsible for the prisoner and the devices that hold him fast. Wow. So that's Zodiac. Zodiac himself, a projection of the moon's core. Though rent asunder by Hydaelyn, he grows more powerful with every rejoining. Seven there have been, seven too many. And yet, for all his servants' machinations, he remains incomplete. The fallen are beyond salvation. No attempt would be made to free Zodiac, not until he is whole once more. But someone has taken action. The shackles that hold him nearly shattered. Six locks to his gull, great and grand. Gargantuan swords driven deep, brands to bind Zodiac forevermore. Five were destroyed by his would-be liberator. One of these I have restored. I strive to mend the remaining four, but my efforts are being impeded. Souls sacrificed to summon Zodiac, their manifestation consequence of the waning seal. They labor in opposition to my work. They must be expelled for the preservation of all. If 
keeping Zodiac imprisoned is the right thing to do, I will aid you. I will only resort to expelling them if all else fails. I don't know what to choose. Of that I have no doubt. You are her chosen. I am the watcher and the goaler. I am not the judge. Know this, Hydaelyn commands the forces of stasis, and this moon is the product of such power. So long as Zodiac remains imprisoned in this place, no more sacrifices will be made in his name, nor will those souls rendered up in his name fade into oblivion. Go, meet with these wandering spirits, do what you think is right. Oh my god, you're really gonna leave the choice to me. Oh lord. You're really gonna put me through this moral dilemma? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> New quest from the Watcher. Sea of Sorrow, Mare Lamentorum. The Watcher would have you deal with the specters haunting the moon. You must confront those lost souls, yes, but you need not expel them by might of arms. A feather touch, a firm word, simple methods may send them away, faint echoes as they are. Wear the strength of sentiment that drives them, however, emotions that do not fade even with the passage of centuries. Did that guy just jump down? And make haste, though yet distant, unwelcome guests draw closer. Let me guess who that is. Of the six elemental brands, only those of Levin and Wind are intact. If the other brands are not reforged, Zodiac may yet be freed. Find the spirits of the sacrificed and do what must be done. <sighs> no, I don't want to. I don't want to do what he did. I am not as brave. Let me. Let me actually take the stairs down, like a normal person. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Which door was it again? Okay, okay. Mare Lamentorum, the Sea of Sorrows. Okay, so I guess we start with this one? Faded spirit. Where? When? How long? Okay. Ah. Uh, hmm. Oh god, it's so far. Never mind. <clears throat> Dreaming spirit. Was it truly... So long ago? Forlorn spirit. 
Oh no, this one has negative emotions. We were happy. At peace with the star. We nurtured it. Helped it grow. With our will. Our creations. <sighs> Man, this sucks. <laughs> <clears throat> Somber spirit. We were the stars beating heart. It's life. Every soul a drop of blood flowing through its veins. To live. To learn. To create, to make better. The star flourished, as did we. Do you remember? <laughs> as the whispers die, the final spirit fades. No shadows of times long lost remain around the drowning brand. Doggo? Doggo? An unusually lustrous dog is gazing at you with what seems to be fond anticipation. Do I throw something? Doggo? It appears to be waiting for you to follow it. <laughs> Follow the lustrous dog and try not to fall behind. Oh god. Really? The lustrous dog leads the way. This dog has very good shampoo and conditioner. Uh, where are we going? Where are we going, lassie? Did little Timmy fall down the well again? Where are you taking me? <laughs> Valis Vulneris. Uh, where are we going? Huh? A cave? Where are you taking me? Did little Timmy really fall down the well? Because it sure looks like it. He looks like a, what do you call it, an Afghan hound. Those dogs with like really beautiful hair. Eh? Oi. <laughs> Where are we? More souls you want me to deal with? Temperamental spirit. Well, that doesn't bode well. The dog silently regards the spirit that lurks near the brand. Perhaps the dog will let you pet it once you have dealt with the lingering spirit. Can I pet it now? Nid. Can I pet it? Okay. Oh no, this smells like a battle to me. I'm scared. We and the star were fulfilled. Wanted for naught. Mourned for naught. So why? Why did it have to end? Eh. days taught us to fear a death forced upon us. The injustice of duties and dreams left unfulfilled. The grief of unexpected partings. Swift as darkness, 
cold as ash. Such tragedy, yet no catharsis. Such truth, yet no consolation. I'm so sorry. As the whispers die, the spirit fades. All is silent and still around the numbing brand. <sighs> That's sad. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Shampoo commercial dog. Let's go. The lustrous dog is once again staring at you expectantly. And who are you to deny it? Follow and try not to fall behind. Hey, 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 hey. Straight into a mob. Yes. No. I am so jealous of those people flying around and doing fates and stuff. Someday, I too shall collect all of my other currents. I wonder if I should dip in, if there's anything to dip into. <laughs> I could choose to buy color gems. Like... <laughs> I'm sorry! Doggy, where are we going? There's like a fate right there, I should probably... <laughs> Doggy... <laughs> Tall boy cactuars! I finally see them! <laughs> oh my god, they look ridiculous! <laughs> Please don't bring me straight through them. The dog continues to focus on the shadow as if to say, Stop petting me and get on with it, please. Okay, okay. Perfection came crumbling down. Such overwhelming despair. In that moment, we knew the end was nigh. The faintest glimmer of hope remained. We gave our lives that others may live. We gave ourselves to Zodiac. Zodiac, our Lord and Savior, to forge our world anew. Fuck. Yo, what's happening? To live and love again. Become one with the star. Fill earth and heaven with life. Birth paradise where fear is distant memory. Well, this is peer pressure. friend familiar spirit ah that unmistakable color the soul of azem 
There's only one person I know who has recognized us as Azam. Well, two. Two people. One is a shade. Oh my god! Okay, I'm getting excited over nothing. One sec. But not the friend I knew, I think. Nevertheless, you are you. Hmm, so Emmet Selk meant for you to have it, so this isn't Emmet? <laughs> Emmet? Huh? Yes, this is a Zen stone. You seem surprised. Why might that be? Hithlodius! <laughs> Hithlodius! We meet again, Hithlodius. Friend! Big friend! Or at least it was your shade that I saw in Amarot. Again? I do not believe I have yet had the pleasure. Now to explain Amarot to <laughs> this game. Your other friend made a copy of you in a, in a fake city. Oh. Emmet Sel created a shade in my likeness, and not only me, but all of Amarot? <laughs> How very like him. <laughs> A slave to sentiment even after an eternity. As you may have guessed, I am different from the shade you met before. No mere approximation, but the original. A soul sacrificed to Zodiac. We remember in vivid detail the events leading to our purgatory. The The plans and plots for our resurrection, Heidelin's intervention, and Zodiac's and the star's final fate. And then we drifted in a waking dream, our minds steeped in fog, until you came. what you and your friends intend for Zodiac or the future of the star. Nevertheless, in you I place my trust and faith. In you I choose to believe as Emmet Selk did. Leave in yourself and all will be well. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> 
Okay, I went so far out. Yeah, we should probably get moving, doggy. <sighs> hmm, more new arrivals. Though... Ah, from Daniel. That color, I know. And another I do not. An unfamiliar but fearsome being. We know exactly who it is. I have kept you from your duty. By way of apology, I will ensure that the shades hinder you no more. Protect the final brand. Fare you well, my new old friend. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Doggy! Doggy! Doggy, doggy, doggy. The Martyr. Something has raised the lustrous dog's hackles. The dog growls, agitated. What is that Luna Tinder thing doing? What will you say? We must protect the brand. Come on, boy. Cry havoc and let slip a dog of war. That's you, by the way. Come on, boy. The dog nudges you with its nose. You get the feeling it wants you to hop on? C can I ride the dog? Why, why, yes. Yes! Oh! Dog takes flight. <laughs> so this is the mount I've been seeing. Where are you taking me? this guy honestly in the nick of time to savor the crowning triumph go to hell unbound and free at last arise zodiac ah <gasps> Deprived of heart and will by the loss of dearest Elidibus. A creature of pure instinct. Wanting 
for guidance. But powerful. Oh, so powerful. More so with every passing moment. For the record, I hate you all. Such potential. Even in this incomplete state. Still the savior who delivered a world from certain doom. Mm-hmm. So, here we stand. What's he? <laughs> you know my intent. Consume the god, then the world. Stoke your fury to a raging inferno, and dance among the ashes. For the nth time, just buy me a fucking coffee, seriously. Or perhaps you would face me here and now. A lesser but welcome amusement. Oh, piss off. Me and my dog are not having any of this. Yes. A taste to whet the appetite. <laughs> He's so fight sexual. <laughs> Sorry to spoil the moment, but might I ask that you postpone the slaughter until I've said my piece? I promise I will be brief. <laughs> I'm getting blue balled by Fontaineo again. <laughs> Do you remember when I told you that I wanted to die? And take everyone with me. I meant it. I know. Something that actually shocks even Xenos. That's new. Another soul sacrificed. Ah. <sighs> We are the savior. We are the guardian, the keeper of natural order. We are the martyr, the bestower of new beginnings. We are. Huh? Lofty aspirations, and what sweet irony that the world's saviors will become the agents of its destruction. It cannot end this way. We must return and be made whole. We are the will of the star, now and forever. For the greater good. For the sake of the world. Wrong, 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 wrong! Lies and delusion! The dead have no power over me. You will be silent. Silent as the grave! <laughs> No more, we beg of you. The star must endure.
Believe and walk in faith. Familiar Let stranger. the light of your soul shine for all to see. Emmet. Not quite the outcome you'd imagined. No. But a fitting one nonetheless. His Lodius? This is his Lodius? This is him? Don't you think so, Hades? <laughs> He's talking to Emmett Sock. Oh god, the music. What? All I crave the more. Boundless power. Mine to command. <laughs> Ooh, wait. I had intended to pit my fractured ability against Xenos. But a more tempting option presents itself. The greatest obstacle to my ambition. You will trouble me no longer. Let me guess. Trial? <gasps> Last I saw this was in Seeds of Sacrifice. <laughs> what is happening? The dark inside now accessible. The wait, 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 wait. This is a trial. Okay, so we managed to get a party together. Uh, three of us plus five randos. YOLO? <laughs> Welcome to the Dark Inside. First trial of Endwalker versus Eternal Darkness Zodiac. We have zero knowledge of how this works. This is a blind run for me. So. Establishing connection. All creation shall bend to my will. Oh god, I'm going to die so much, aren't I? I'm going to die so much. The end has come, and it will be beautiful. The marvels of Circus were but playthings. Was that a doom, huh? What is that? <laughs> what is all this? I'm gonna follow this guy. Oh, <laughs> that's a terrible idea! Malice become flesh!
<laughs> Will you live to see the end? What is this? What is this? Wall stacks on me for shame. Mine, all mine. Maybe I shouldn't have popped wings. <laughs> I didn't even know what it was. I'm sorry. <laughs> At last, I am become Zoya. I shouldn't have popped wings, what a waste. The natural order overturned! All in existence, bent to my will! <gasps> what? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> my life's work! My masterpiece! I still have invulnerability, I still have invulnerability, I still have invulnerability! All in existence! Bent to my will! Will you live to see the end? Right. 
What is happening? I'm just running. <laughs> what does this mean? What does this mean? <laughs> so it, it's gonna go around. Oh, that's what it is! The arrows on the outside of the arena. Oh no my god. To see the end. Oh my god, no. Sorry, guys. I don't know where anyone's going. Okay, so this is like, oh fuck! My co healer has no mana. Oh, God, I'm running out of the floor, you guys. Will you live to see the end? It, we're gonna do another twisty twisty thing, aren't we? <gasps> Is this the limit of your power? Is this how it ends? <laughs> that was amazing! <laughs> that was fucking amazing! <laughs> that was so much fun!
Well done. My preparations are complete. And I stand ready to see the Zodiac once more. Withdraw now from this place. The teleporter will deliver you to safety. <laughs> Incomplete! And insufficient! Of course he was no match! Once again, you have left my best laid plans in ruins! And played your role to perfection! Thus, seeing my victory! From the first, all I wanted was for you to kill Zodiac! Oh my god, it's another one of those. It's one of many methods to achieve the desired effect. It would have been the same had Xenos died in my place. But what better and more satisfying way to ensure success than to take control myself? My sole regret is that you live to tell the tale. Even so, I have fulfilled my heart's desire. Let your murder mark the beginning of the end. The coming of the final days! No, you. Oh my god, what is it now? What grand plan did I play myself right into again? How quickly strength fades and blood cools. Old familiar sensations. So many lives, so many deaths. No different this. I close my eyes and slip into the dreamless slumber. Promise me you won't come back. Sorry, I'm still mad. A tired song and dance. Routine. Always I wake. But not this time. <laughs> Nothing left unsaid. Nothing left undone. Inherit my hell. I intone with glee. The man I was would weep for what I have become. The all-consuming contempt. But I've the wisdom of ten millennia to justify my answer to the question. No value in their existence. Not a wit. For all that I looked. None that I did see. A final chance, then, for Heidelin and her faithful. In Cataclysm, prove me wrong. I sneer. All shall return to nothingness. As was your will, Emperor Zande. I, the star, and every living being 
consigned to your oblivion. Dude, what the fuck? Oh great, now what? Fuck, what? Ah. <laughs> At last. The fuck is happening? Deep breaths, slow and steady. What the fuck just happened? I'm sorry? He saw it too, yes? The blue star below, thrown into turmoil. What did I do this time? Then it was no illusion. All was truth. With the death of Zodiac, the laws of nature over which he presided have begun to unravel. The final days are upon us. What you witnessed was an omen granted by the Echo, a vision of the horrors to come. Grows short. Eh? Crap. Oh, yeah, Xenos. I forgot. <laughs> it's still around. Yeah, I forgot about you. Sorry. Back from Palace of the Dead? No. I'll find no fulfillment in a contest with you this day. Okay. Slavering beasts gather at your gates, ravenous and eager. Already you turn to them and away from me. I'm sorry, you're not exactly my priority, you know. I must go forth once more in search of power far beyond the might of Shinryu. Power to make your heart run over with rage. Your love song is very different. <laughs> For the eldest of primals was a betrayal of promise. A pathetic creature incapable of inspiring true despair. I... That's what I crave. Pure, unadulterated despair. All right, Mr. Edgelord. I 
will not fight for your amusement. We shall see. Yeah, yeah. I'm busy. Go away. You and Magna should talk. You both have a problem with how to pick up chicks. Don't try anything funny. Go away, Xenos. I just want to learn about Longboy Cactuar. Okay. Where am I? The Watcher. Uh, no. I sense his presence on the moon no longer. If you need not follow, then I beg you stay and listen to what I have to tell you. Of Zodiac and the end of all things. Rise up through the night. The Watcher would discuss grave matters with you. Before we speak at length, I believe a change of surrounds is in order. I have more than ill tidings to share, you see. I sensed others arriving not long ago. Though my communions with Hadelin have grown infrequent, I have learned enough from, from her to know these are your comrades. And as luck would have it, they have already reached my abode. Come, let us join them. Yay, friends! That fight was fun, though, by the way. <laughs> that, that fight was quite fun. <laughs> right, right, right. Let's, uh... <laughs> wow. I really enjoyed that trial. I miss the feeling of running around and uh, figuring out what to do. I guess you could say that, I, you know, savage fights do that and stuff, but you know. Still. Pillar of industry, merchant and mender. Huh. Yes, they are indeed the three I sensed. Thancred! He's just looking up at, like... Dare I ask what happened before we arrived? You wouldn't believe! Urianjay. Maybe presume this being is a native of the moon? Yep. I like how they're all just looking up at it. <laughs> hey! Thank goodness you are unharmed. We did what we could to subdue the tempered before making our way here. Not without casualties, unfortunately. Some few detonated explosives killing themselves and others. The contingent's healers had their hands full tending to the injured and enthralled when we took our leave. Lest you wonder, Mistress Kryle hath also been delivered unto their care. Serving as a conduit for Hydaelyn's power hath taken its toll, but she will recover in due course. As for Alphinode and Alice, they insisted on remaining in Garlemald while we three rushed to your aid. It appears, however, that matters here have already come to a conclusion. Big friend. But what manner of conclusion, if I might ask? And is this the ally whom Hydaelyn bade you seek out? He is not unlike the Shades of Amaroth. Not unlike, perhaps, but not the same. 
I was created by Heidelin, together with this place. It has ever been my duty to keep vigil over Zodiac, or rather, it was my duty. You guys wouldn't believe what the fuck happened. Then Zodiac is no more? Mm-hmm. And not without consequence, I am afraid. For now the delicate weave of the star preserved by his presence will begin to unravel. If you mean to avert the final days, you shall have need of... Oh, come on! No, 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 no. Are you all right? No. My attempts to forestall Zodiac's release have all but exhausted my strength. If you might allow me to rest a short while, I will share with you all I can. Please do. You need not exert yourself on our account. These crystals contain records of your time here, yes? Maybe peruse them while we wait? By all means, if you would review them chronologically, might I suggest beginning with those on the upper floor? I shall leave that to you, Alexia, while I see that while I see what can be gleaned from the crystals on these lower levels. You just don't want to climb all the way to the top. <laughs> he goes into the friend sized chair. moment longer, friend. Okay, up we go. Hmm? Zodiac defeated. While he may have been an, in an incomplete state, that's nevertheless an impressive feat. But even if he hadn't, his demise was inevitable. Fun Daniel would have seen to it one way or another. That said, he probably would have wielded Zodiac's power to wreak untold destruction before taking his own life, making this the better of two unfavorable outcomes. Oriange. Dost thou suppose our host hath maintained his solitary vigil since the very beginning, without rest or relief? If so, these records comprise the sum total of his existence. We must needs handle them with care. As you gaze into the crystal, ancient knowledge of Zodiac flows through your mind. Daily summary, no abnormalities detected. Daily summary, no abnormalities detected. Daily summary, no abnormalities detected. These appear to be records of a long, lonely vigil on the moon, dating back to the beginning of Zodiac's imprisonment. Well, that's sad. That's really sad. Someone's jeep posing over there. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so... There's another one down there you want me to check out? Okay. That's... Yeah. That's pretty fucking sad. As you gaze into the crystal, knowledge of past calamities flows through your mind. The records describe how, with each rejoining, Zodiac's thirst for freedom grew, as did the strain on his brands. Maintaining Zodiac's imprisonment appears to tax Heidelin greatly. Warmly glowing crystal.
As you gaze into the crystal, knowledge of the past rejoinings flows through your mind. The records describe the Watcher's efforts to prepare in the event Zodiac broke free from his prison. The records go on to describe maintenance carried out regularly with the Loperits, though it is not clear who or what they are. As you gaze into the crystal, a record of an unexpected visitor flows through your mind. The records note the Watcher's musings when Elidibus is spotted on the moon, though clearly not for the first time. Crystalline memories. It is clear he and his brethren have a keen interest in freeing Zodiac from his prison, and yet they have made no attempt to destroy the brands. Perhaps they prefer he remain hidden from mortal eyes until the final rejoining. Perhaps they realize we would never dare bring harm to Zodiac so long as he remains imprisoned. Wow. Okay. I, I don't... This is another one of those... Um, I did what I, was, what I was told and now I feel like a jerk. Kind of things. <laughs> Fuck. Stola? Did you learn anything of import? Something, something, other. I feel like a jerk now. And Loperitz. So it is as we suspected. Maintaining the brands requires a great deal of her energy and focus, and this cost has grown higher with every rejoining. That would explain why contact with her has become rather infrequent since the seventh Umbral Calamity. I too made a rather startling discovery. This heavenly body we know to be the moon was in fact created by Halden. <laughs> when the Watcher said he was created together with this place, I thought he only meant this facility. Truly, Heidelin's power, powers are far beyond anything I could have imagined. Big friend, we're so sorry. I thank you for affording me this short retreat. Oops. It is we who should thank you. The records stored here are nothing short of extraordinary. There is much we could learn of Zodiac and his imprisonment. But perhaps you could offer us more focused guidance. Pray, tell us of the calamity that came before and comes now again. Long ago, before the great sundering, there was but a single world. Etheris. Etheris? <laughs> One day from within the earth, a terrible cry issued forth affecting a profound change in all manner of life. We were not exempt. Our creation magics ran rampant, giving shape and form to thoughts of hopelessness and despair. First, the phenomenon was limited to a single region, but quickly, so very quickly, it spread and engulfed the whole of the star. 
Were the ancients ever able to deduce its source? They were not. However, the convocation stru struck up a struck upon a method to predict where the next corruption would manifest. His robes are so pretty. The etheric energies which flow through all of creation in the form of various currents. The currents which course through the land and seas. Those which flow through the very air. those of a celestial nature which encompass both our star and this moon. Celestial currents. I cannot say I am familiar with the concept. Nor would I expect you to be. Few scholars of our time knew of their existence. Their invaluable knowledge helped us to better understand the nature of the calamity. Like the terrestrial ones of Earth and air, the celestial currents form a vast network, but the ethereal distribution is not consistent. The Convocation soon realized that the inciting incidents occurred in regions where the flow was weakest. without clear cause ultimately. Nevertheless, on closer study, a stagnancy of ether was observed in nearby currents. And so they sought a means to harness the forces of darkness, of activity and growth. Thus was Zodiac conceived. No less a power than a god's could set right the laws of nature and quicken the flow of ether within the star. Precisely. With the advent of Zodiac, our end was averted. Emmett Selk claimed that those who summoned Hydaelyn did so because they saw Zodiac's power as a threat. Is that true? Indeed, there was a faction of both opposed to Zodiac's creation, but their aim was never to unmake him. Oh, 
They understood the continued preservation of the natural order was dependent on his very existence. Until we could identify and address the underlying cause of the final days, he would need remain, for his departure would set in motion those apocalyptic forces once more. Hydaelyn recognized this as well, and so, rather than destroy, she sundered Zodiac herself and the star into lesser reflections, that she might confine him in this place. Mm, those that didn't pay attention during Shadowbringers. Hello. <laughs> I could have sworn she beseeched me to banish the darkness. Then what she told me in the ethereal sea was false? That the two once dwelled as one until Zodiac grew hungry for power, upsetting the balance twixt them, not quite a lie, though a rather gross embellishment. But knowing what you know now, you must surely realize why she might opt to obfuscate and mislead. Hydaelyn and Zodiac are both constructs of man, approximations of perfection limited by our own imperfections. Zodiac was, without question, the more powerful of the two having been born from the sacrifice of half Aetheris' population. Thus was it necessary for Heidelin to commit herself wholly to his defeat. Still more effort was needed to confine him. Maintaining the brands taxed her greatly. With what power she dared spare, she cried out to any who might listen, and offered her blessing to those who heeded her call. Though it was likely within her power to do so, I believe she did not wish to speak of Etheris and her history. <sighs> like Zodiac, Heidelin's purpose is a reflection of her creators. They wished to look to the future and not linger in a prison of the past. The Asians set in motion seven rejoinings before we came to oppose them. How many more worlds would have been lost had we not placed our faith in her? How many more souls living in the present would have been snuffed out for the sake of those long dead? Well, in light of recent events, I see no reason to doubt your words. 
And even if Hydaelyn is not a god in truth, if Minfilia believed that we should trust in her plans, then I choose to do just that. Which brings me to a rather important question. Let's suppose we try but fail to stop this second coming of the final days. Should the source fall, what will become of the other worlds? The nomenclature is more fitting than you know. Bring ruin to the source, and its reflections will share in its fate. Oh my god. So the first. Ah, it is ready. This way, if you would be so kind. This music. A beautiful sight, is it not? Yes, but what is it? Heidelin knew better th than any that her power was not absolute. Indeed, she has ever struggled to hold Zodiac and his faithful at bay. She feared the worst and so made preparations. In the event of his demise, there would be a contingency. This moon is more than a prison. It is a vessel capable of bearing the people of Aetheris to safe harbor. You need not go far to find its pilots. In fact, I should be happy to take you to them. And fulfill my final duty as watcher in the dark. Hey, don't say that. What? What do you mean, your final duty? I know this is a great Jeepo spot, you guys. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we do that, we do our thing as, as usual. Uyanje, I should very much like to hear more of this extraordinary story. Bankrate? The moon is a ship? Well, now I've heard everything. <laughs> Here's Jola. It may be true, but others will struggle to believe it. I can scarcely believe it myself. Helping hands. At long last, the Watcher is ready to fulfill his final duty. Please don't die on me, please. Just take a vacation, don't die. The time has come for you to be on your way. 
The crater at the heart of Mare Lamentorum, where Zodiac was imprisoned, is not so easily traversed, however. Let us call upon Argos, the familiar whom you met earlier. He should have no trouble bearing you across. You mean Doggo? Wait, it, that's his name? Argos? As Heidelin created me as the Gowler, so too did she create Argos as the guard. It is his nature to appear when needed, and yet he is nowhere to be found. Strange. Mayhap the imbalancing of either has affected him. Doggo where? Let us make for the crushing brand and attempt to call upon him there. You need not but recall the path you walked with Argos before, and you will find your way. Oh fuck. No, I don't remember. <laughs> If he labors in service to Heidelin's plan, I see no reason not to do as he suggests. Shall we make for this crushing brand, then? Uh... Oh fuck. Do I remember how to get, <laughs> how to get there? Was it the one where his Lodius was? Where we met Hilladius earlier. What was that it? I think I see a path. Is it that one? Okay, I think... Okay, okay, okay. I think we're on the right track. Or <laughs> like, just recall where you were brought earlier. Fuck if I remember. <laughs> How do I become friends? Oh, they're aggressive. No, please don't chase after me. Count with Levia Levian spines. <laughs> Rianje, not not could prepare me for the boundless beauty of Etheris, shining, shimmering amidst a sea of stars, a blue sapphire, and but one of countless other jewels bringing brimming with life. No doubt. Ishtola. So close and yet so far. Does not the harsh terrain remind you of somewhere we've been before? The Dravanian forelands, aye. A place that rejects the intrusion of outsiders, where solitude reigns supreme. At the very least, it sounds suitable for Zodiac's prison. Thancret. With a little preparation, it might be possible to traverse the gap on foot. Then again, it will be a long, long way down if one should slip. Perhaps another time. The Watcher. The place we seek is just ahead at the Chlorophoscot. Chlorophoscot? Chlorophoscot. What? <laughs> you see, Argos cannot manifest without sufficient concentrations of ambient ether. You would be hard-pressed to find a greater confluence than inside this cavern. Follow me. Where are you going? Go. Oh. Um. Hmm. Yellow. Go away. Go away. <laughs> Go 
Thank you. Thank you. The guard of Zodiac's prison, eh? Blood red eyes, slavering maw, and built like a behemoth, I'd imagine. Let's hope he's friendly. He's fishing! <laughs> He's fishing! <laughs> oh, he caught something! <laughs> he caught something! What the fuck? <laughs> you This entire cave is thrumming with ambient ether. Alas, any further analysis will have to wait. Oriange. Curious. This place doth call to mind Plaeni, home of the Numo. Friend. Yes, here will do nicely. The lunar spon spongy. Spongy? Draw either from the ground, which is then dispersed in the air. At present, however, the ambient energies are not quite sufficient for Argos to manifest. Might you be willing to spare some of your own to help the spongy spongoy? Spongoy? <laughs> Along? Uh Given time the lunar sponge spongoy would suffuse this space with sufficient ether, but we need not wait if you are willing to provide a helping hand. Uh Lunar spongy thing. Spongoy? Spongoy? <laughs> Doggo! Argos, I'm sorry. Oh, he shakes his butt! Argos manifests in a flash. He seems glad to see you again. A most fascinating creation of Hydaelyn's, would you not agree? Should the need arise, he is even able to create reflections of himself on a whim. Though I assure you, it was no reflection which accompanied you earlier to the brand. No, Argos was quite eager to be at your side then, as he is now, it seems. I cannot recall when last he showed such an affinity for anyone. Indeed, I thought him more likely to shy away from you and your companions. Perhaps it was more than a sense of duty that compelled him to aid you before. Doggo. As for your companions... Doggo! Doggo for everyone! Unexpected, but greatly appreciated. I believe we are all ready. Then let us return outside that you may cross the chasm. Is she still fishing? <laughs> Thancred, I was expecting something a little more intimidating and less man's best friend. Rianje, to whom would Sidelin entrust the command of so grand a vessel, I wonder? Ishtola, Dalamud has long been described as the loyal hound of Minfina due to its relation to the greater moon. It seems highly improbable, if not impossible, for ancient peoples to have known of Argos, but now I wonder whether there is some connection. Hurry, <laughs> let's do the G pose real quick. Your destination is this structure there across the Cradle of Darkness. But climb onto but climb onto Argos's back and he will take care of the rest. Once you arrive, it should not take long to find the ship's crew. The facility is designed to rouse them from their slumber in the event of Zodiac's destruction. 
heed their counsel. Together, you may guide the star and its people to a kinder fate. This is where we part ways, but know that I shall ever be watching and praying for your success. Worry not for me. Real though I may appear as you and yours, I am but a part of this moon, a creation of Hydaelyn entrusted with the memories of an acquaintance long dead but not forgotten. My charge of Zodiac has ended, but so long as the moon exists, I shall not want for purpose. I shall remain ever watching, ever praying for your success. <laughs> Argos? Argos favors you with what could almost be described as a conspiratorial grin. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go, Yashtola. Our allies' assurances notwithstanding, we cannot be certain what awaits us on the other side. So perhaps it would be best if we did not all go at once. I propose the two of us cross first while Sankrit and Oriange wait here. Let's go. Onward. A malefic aether yet permeates the crater. Remnants of Zodiac, most, most like. Should I be attuning to the <laughs> I'm out here? Just a little further. Whoa, it looks like the door to the Crystal Tower. What level am I, by the way? 88, okay. The structure is enormous, though that is hardly surprising given the size of the average Amarantine. Apologies for the wait. Right then, let us head inside and... Oh? More dogs? Oh. Most intriguing, a means by which he conserves his energy, mayhap. Well, I certainly wouldn't want him to blink out of existence on our account, helpful as he's been. Thank you, Argos. We'll take things from here. Stay here where it's safe, all right? I'm worried. It's my doggo. Doggo! If Argos is to remain without, let us not keep him waiting over long. I care you. So, where are we going? Oh, there he is. Okay, okay. Oh. Holy crap. What? Best ways burrow. Wow. What is going on here? Also, did I just... <laughs> wow! Oriange. Truly a marvel beyond description. I know, right? Stola? Its scale is reminiscent of Amarot, or rather, the replica we visited on the first. Thancred? Hey, even the Itherite looks like Amarot. Our moonship pilot should be around here somewhere. 
Is that right? Is this a dungeon? <laughs> eh? What did we do? Look lively, everyone! I know, I know, this 1,243rd inspection is a mite ahead of schedule, but it is of the utmost importance! For Zodiac, alas, is no more. <laughs> you know, she's just talking about it like it's just some, you know, milk spilled in aisle 5. Oh, we gotta go clean it up now. Oh, well. As of now, our mighty moon has a new purpose. To bear the people of Aetherius to safety. Aetherius. Okay. Our time has come, my friends. Our time has come. <laughs> I can't stop taking screenshots. We must be swifter than swift. There is much to do before our guests arrive. I expect your workstations to be immaculate. And don't forget to relay our signal to Aetherius. Questions? Yes? No? Maybe so? No? Then hop to it! Oh my goodness! They seem very organized though. A well-oiled machine. It is a rather curious crew she hath chosen. Their endearing forms intended to ease the passengers' hearts, perhaps. They cute. Perhaps. <laughs> He's just dumbfounded. Sirius. <laughs> That's how you pronounce it. So. <laughs> Oh lord. Uh <laughs> Okay, okay. Given the present crisis, Heidelin doubtless sought to facilitate cooperation betwixt pilot and passenger. Indeed, would require a heart as hard as diamond to raise one's voice in anger to beings possessed of such a profound saccharinity. <laughs> I find Orianche's reasoning somewhat flimsy, but the crew seems amicable but enough. <gasps> Tancred? Have you gotten your jaw off the floor? <laughs> Tancred's dumbfounded expression suggests he is still struggling to comprehend the spectacle he has just witnessed. Okay, someone's still. I've just been told that there's an Aether current nearby. They must be the Loperitz mentioned in the Watcher's records. Not at all what I expected, but the Watcher did bid us heed their counsel. I assume the one who gave that rousing speech was their leader, though we might have to ask about in, or in order to track them down. Come on then, let us be about it. There's an Aether current? Where? <laughs> 29, 29 yawns to the northeast. Dancing way. No. 
dancing when you're singing. I heard that your kind hop about when they hear music. Is that true? Can you turn it off? What are you playing? Are you playing an instrument? Fighting way. I have decided to form a fellowship of protectors to escort people as they arrive. So relax, you and yours are in safe paws. Very, very safe paws. <laughs> this is driving me crazy. I wanted to talk to Rianjay first. I saw him on the way down. Is this an Etherite? Can I tune to it? We can, thank god. I've seen so many deactivated and uh, basically non functioning Aetherites so far that it's, yeah, it's starting to get really frustrating. <laughs> okay. The Lopperids all appear to have set about their tasks. Whether it's the leader, I wonder. Okay. I'm glad they let us mount up in here. <laughs> okay. Chipper Lopperich. Huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> the leader of the crew? Not me, I'm afraid. Singing Way's the name. I'm in charge of the construction and maintenance of the atmospheric circulation system. Only the crispest, cleanest air for the people of Atheris. And that's a promise. Okay. Yishtala! I didn't notice you there. Such a fascinating apparatus, though it's hard to believe it could house so many crew members. Even so, there is nothing else here to suggest other types of accommodation. Not for the likes of us, though. So where's that other guy I'm supposed to talk to? Guiding way. Do you need help with something? I'm busy assigning duties at the moment. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Dozing Lopperit. Weaving way. What do you think of our clothing? I'll have you know I'm the mastermind behind its design. <laughs> Dozing while he's so sleepy. Mlim, mlim, mlim. Leader? No. <laughs> Sleeping way. My job is... is... hmm. Perhaps I'd better ask. Oh no. I relate so much to you, Sleeping way. <laughs> I think I've found my my Loperit. <laughs> they have like this really cute eight bit music. What the hell? <laughs> Boosting way. <laughs> it's a pleasure to finally meet one of you, Miss. I'm just preparing this and that for when more of your kind arrive, so you can all feel at home. <laughs> Recording way! Oh my, but isn't this exciting? I've never seen one of your kind up close before. Would you mind if I take some measurements of your body? Just for reference, of course. Okay. Wait, why does that one say nothing? Wait, I know I'm getting distracted from the MSQ. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're all going to die someday. So what if it happens a little sooner? Oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> why? Snappy Lopperit. I think this is her. <laughs> what? What? How in the... When did you get here? Who let you in? Why wasn't I told? Taking me to your leader. 
Were you the ones giving orders earlier? Mm -da 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 -da. <laughs> what was that supposed to be? Your humming, if one can even call it that, is atrociously off key. It should sound more like this. <laughs> As leader of the Lopperitz, I cannot allow substandard attempts at musicality to go unremarked, even if you are a guest. But being the magnanimous sort that I am, I'll forgive you this once. <laughs> Well, well, looks like you beat us here. Your friends, I take it? Is this all of them? A group comprised entirely of children? What must their parents be thinking? Children? This isn't a nursery, after all. So perhaps we should build one. Or did we build one already? No matter. You needn't worry your pretty little heads. All will be well, I promise. But goodness me, we shouldn't be standing about gawping. I must take you to meet the others. Children. I guess we're relatively young compared to... If you, if you could run along back toward the entrance, you'll find a path that leads to the central platform on the upper floor. There's no wrong way to reach it, but it's the large glowing ball at the center, if you should find yourselves lost. I shall gather the others and meet you there. Well then, back to the upper floor it is. <laughs> na 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 <laughs> Oh man, okay, let's get back upstairs, I guess. Alright, uh, I think we're at the right location. <laughs> I see. Uh, I see Sai over there, I guess we're at the right location. <laughs> Boyanje? It is astounding how the Loperates, despite their diminutive stature, are able to maintain such gargantuan facilities. Sancred? Given their size, getting from one end of this place to the other must be exhausting. I honestly don't know how they do it. Where's Yishtola? Oh, Yishtola. The etheric composition and density of this sphere is quite similar to the crystalline concepts we've seen before. It likely shares their capacity for storing memories and knowledge. Mapping way. Visitors at last. Welcome. <laughs> Back to the snappy loperate. for the express purpose of commanding this ship and bearing the people of Atheris to a brave new world. <laughs> More specifically, I am the one whom she charged with the execution of her most vital plans. You might say I'm her right core. <laughs> She's Nothing very proud. The name, map reader and navigator of the heavens. Pleasure to meet you all, but I'm still trying to make sense of this. <laughs> With Sancred get wrap his head around it. Confusion and bewilderment are completely understandable. Fear not, I shall walk you through it. The people of Atheris, through no fault of your own, I'm sure, set in motion a series of events that, unfortunately, culminated in Zodiac's obliteration. Acutely aware of the imminent crisis, your parents sent you little ones on ahead while they began the necessary preparations. Your parents? Little ones? Still not following? No? Very well, I shall elaborate further. Oh. 
What's that? Here, we have a Therese, your home, and the moon, where we are now. Without Zodiac around to keep things lively, so to speak, the celestial currents of the star have doubtless begun to degrade. A calamity of apocalyptic proportions will be visited upon a Therese, bringing an end to all life. Very sad, that. Very sad, that. It sounds like it's just a minor inconvenience. <laughs> so too hath the Watcher claimed. By thine unperturbed countenance, I gather this eventuality was anticipated. The doom and gloom. Oh, yes. Quite expected. Oh, yes. We totally expected that. Don't worry. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, that a Therese is a delicious carrot that I've forgotten to eat and left out in the midday sun. <laughs> Excuse me? The most earnest wishes or prayers will not stop it from rotting to the core. So sadly, there's nothing to be done but to abandon said carrot, Atheris, in case the metaphor is lost on you, to its grisly fate. <laughs> it's so condescending! <laughs> and this moon will serve as the vessel to deliver us to a new home. Just so! We will gather up as many people, supplies, and resources as our stores will hold. And then, once everyone is aboard, it's off to another star! Easier said than done, admittedly. For one does not simply hop from star to star on a whim. Which is precisely why we've spent countless years constructing the most propulsive of propulsion systems! <laughs> we ought to make it to our destination in two shakes of a rabbit's tail. And the destination is where exactly? Impressive technology. I dare say it is beyond anything we have ever seen. No need to shower us with praise. All we've done is faithfully carry out the instructions left to us by Hydaelyn. Back in the old days, when she was still just Venar, she was dedicated to the study of the world and its inner workings. Venar. And the Watcher, the real one, not the simulacrum you met, was one of her fellow researchers. We, and this wondrous vessel, masquerading as a moon, are products of their knowledge and know-how. There's certainly more to you all than meets the eye. Might I ask where exactly you intend to take us? We identified a few promising candidates for resettlement some time ago, but we cannot guarantee that they are fit for habitation. He has a lisp. Moreover, the ship can only travel in short bursts. We intend to go down our list, hopping from star to star, until we find one suitable for resettlement. No need to worry, though. The vessel is being refurbished with accommodation for an extended stay as we speak. While we did have to rely upon outside help to determine what amenities were essential, I dare say we have risen to the challenge. Okay. Help? From who? Good question. <laughs> From you and yours! Who else? Each time we woke to perform regularly scheduled maintenance, we were greeted by the resources you sent us. What better way to learn about preferences and proclivities of our present day charges? That we sent you? Ah, oh, but you're still adorable little children. Perhaps your elders were responsible for the deliveries. Uh... I'm not sure what led you to conclude otherwise, but I can assure you that we are all grown men and women. And I very much doubt my elders know this place exists, much less how to send you so much as a starlight missive. What? Then who in blazes let you on my moon? <gasps> my moon! Hi, 
Gwendolyn herself led you here. You don't say! Well, that's really not children. Then why are you so small and stunted? Like little baby carrot people. <laughs> Teams were a great deal taller. In the present day, persons of such prodigious size are exceedingly rare. So, you're saying everyone's not like the Watcher? No. Where'd that oh, come from? Found it all. Someone could have at least scribbled a note about your profound miniaturization. Miniaturization. That tome in my possession. Us, a compendium of the people of Atheris, with a few blank pages at the back for minor corrections and updates as needed. The sum total of our knowledge of your kind is contained in these pages. Not very much, from the looks of it. I thought it was abridged and made small for our benefit, but this isn't a regular sized book, is it? No. I know the feeling. Building way, can you hear me? Yes, we're all very busy. Change of plans. I need you to rebuild the domiciles at one third the scale. All of them. Yes, all of them, and but me no buts. See to it with all speed. Building way. <laughs> Perhaps you could tell us a bit more about your terrestrial collaborators. I'd rather not risk any other complications due to outdated knowledge of our passengers to be. <laughs> A hairy situation. <laughs> what? I... I'm so confused right now. <gasps> I'm so confused. Uh. <laughs> Little baby carrot people. <gasps> Mapping way. Oh dear, I certainly hope building way can complete the renovations before more guests arrive. Or perhaps he should leave them as they are. That way you'd have more space to lounge about. Bankred? Why do I get the feeling we're going to have our hands full dealing with the Loperids? Uh, Orianje? It is unfortunate that the, that the domiciles were constructed in error, but their willingness to perform such sweeping renovations is a testament to their commitment. I cannot fathom the resources required to, for a facility so vast. Mirtola? I should have realized something was amiss when Living Way referred to us as children. What other delightful misconceptions do they hold, I wonder? We're about to find out. A taste of the moon. With the final days fast approaching, Living Way is keen to complete her preparations. Right then. Now that you're here, we, we need you to teach us all you can about your people, and quickly. It won't be long before the final days are upon us in all their terrible grandeur, so it is imperative that we be prepared to receive our passengers to be. If there is anything, anything at all that may displease them, it must be addressed address post haste. And address it we shall. Here at Bestways Borough, we have assembled everything required to offer our guests the best way forward. Oh my god! I didn't catch that right <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh my! <laughs> I 
him. We have produced myriad amenities we understand to be essential for day-to-day -day living, and I wish to hear your opinions of them. I'm sure you've all worked up an appetite, so why don't we start with foodstuffs? Meet me at the car caratorium, and we'll see about filling your bellies. The caratorium? She does not want for enthusiasm. The notion of Aetherius rotting to its core being a matter of course is rather concerning, though. Nevertheless, let us take this opportunity to learn more of the Loperitz and this vessel. <laughs> Where are we going? Where's the caratorium? Okay. I have a question. Will I die if I try? <laughs> this place is so big. Where do I even start? Uh... <laughs> How do I get down there? Uh... Please tell me there are... Oh god. I need flight. And I, and I need flight quickly. This place is just sprawling. It's gigantic. I mean, I get it. I get what it's for, but... <laughs> Holy crap. Vishtola? <gasps> Given their earlier confusion regarding our size, I cannot help but wonder if they even know the first thing about us. Oriange, hast thou spy the peculiar sentinels patrolling the vicinity? Approach them with caution, or better yet, not at all, for they make no distinction between friend or foe. Am I the only one who suspects we're not going to find anything edible whatsoever? <laughs> Cooking way? You're a lot smaller than we expected, but I trust you will still have large appetites, yes? <laughs> Please don't feed us just carrots. <laughs> Living way? Welcome to the Caratorium. Here we create prototypes of the various sundries required by our soon-to-be passengers. Allow me to introduce the head of foodstuff production. Cooking way. Pleasure to meet you all. Our work has involved no small amount of trial and error, but after many, many cycles of painstaking labor, I dare say we have created the finest cuisine our guests could ask for. I've learned all about the essential nutrients for a healthy and balanced diet from the reference materials we received. Why, I've practically worn the words from those invaluable pages. Naturally, we've also considered ease of growth and production. We will not want for ingredients. I must insist you try some. We have fresh stock recently prepared on account of, well, because we just woke up and we are all quite famished. Hop along the platforms here and you'll find storage unit full, full to bursting with delectable delights. Help yourself to anything you like. I have a bad feeling about this. Oh dear, they were meant for big people, I guess. Yep. They're all carrots. Just different colors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who gave them that wrong reference material? <gasps> I, I know I'm a rabbit and everything, but... Blasting me. <laughs> This doesn't require debate. We have work to do, so quit dragging your feet and get to it. Philosopher's carrots. Iron carrots first. We won't get far without them. What? You open the storage unit and find a rainbow-colored assortment of carrots. Which carrot will you choose? The unassuming orange carrot. The peculiar-looking blue carrot. The vibrant yellow carrot. The ominous crimson carrot. Take a moment to reconsider. Um, 
I'll take the blue one because it's the same color as my hair. The blue variety is strangely supple to the touch and smells vaguely of mint. Its excessive length and girth only adds to the dubiousness of this so-called carrot. Mmm! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to think. <laughs> Are you certain you wish to eat this carrot? No, let's try another one. How about the orange one? From front, from front to tip, no scratches or blemishes mar this immaculate specimen. Nevertheless, if not for its excessive length and girth, one might think it was an ordinary carrot. <laughs> Are you certain you wish to eat this guy? No. Let's try. Let's try the yellow one. While it has no peculiar smell to speak of, the yellow variant is unusually light and springy. These qualities, together with its excessive length and girth, would lead anyone to question whether it is indeed a carrot. <laughs> These are dicks. <laughs> We're all talking about dicks. No. <laughs> As ominous crimson carrot. The soft texture and redolent aroma of this crimson creation belie its staggering weight. The excessive length and girth only compound the mystery, leaving you perplexed as to the nature of this carrot. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's uh, let's go for the blue one. Let's go for the blue. <laughs> yeah, let's try it. On second thought, you elect to simply take an obscenely large carrot for now. Due to its bizarre qualities, it would be prudent to ask Cooking Way whether it's safe to eat first. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's ask cooking way. <laughs> ah. Ow! <gasps> Living way? I'm eager to hear what you think of our work. I'm sure there's some small room for, for improvement, but I'm confident you'll be satisfied. Again, this is about dicks, isn't it? So, did any of our selections set your mouth to watering? Obscenely large carrot. <laughs> Even Viera, I like to swoon at the sight of so grand a carrot. That or be offended by all those who assume that they would. <laughs> I'm dying. Ah, yes, a fine choice. One of my personal favorites, actually. Please dig in. I'm eager to hear what you think. Show cooking way the obscenely large carrot. I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. Wait, what am I supposed to do? I'm sorry, what exactly do you want me to do? <laughs> Eat the obscenely large carrot. <laughs> oh no. With great trepidation, you take a bite out of the carrot. You are taken by surprise when blue juices burst forth from the carrot and dribble down your chin. As you take your second bite, you can feel your mental faculties sharpening. Your mind opens to the universe and for a brief moment, the mysteries of existence are simple, transformative truths. I'm taking screenshots, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the revelation is fleeting. When you at last finish the carrot, a sweet yet sour aftertaste lingers on your tongue and the number 42 on your mind. Douglas Adams, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The answer to life, the universe and everything is 42. Remember that. Oh, who's fighting? 
Um, why are you fighting? <laughs> why is the battle of music 8 bit? <laughs> FF4? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm getting so distracted. I'm getting so distracted. What did you think? Unlike anything you've ever, you've ever tasted, yes? The Philosopher's Carrot improves mental fortitude. Something of a shock at first bite, but it's well worth the enhanced powers of cognition. We have plenty of other varieties too. Bleeding carrots to improve blood flow. Dream carrots to help with sleep. So you see, we have a carrot for every occasion. These carrots are... extraordinary. But what if I don't like carrots? I can certainly see demand for this in Charlian. Let's just compliment the cook. <laughs> then why do you seem so disappointed? If they're lacking somehow, we need to know. I take it you too had a wide assortment of carrots to choose from and not else? If I may ask, what exactly did these collaborators share with you about cuisine on the Theris? Surely you are aware we have an abundance of dishes and foods you could emulate. Of course we are, but, well, it was only quite recently that we established contact. Even holding a conversation was a struggle at first, so imagine our surprise when they sent a mountain of books and documents with no clear instructions. The sheer amount of information was overwhelming. If it wasn't for that encyclopedia I found, we would have been at a loss where to begin. And so we decided, rather than divide our resources to prepare a variety of middling and potentially unsatisfying meals, it would be more efficient to devote our efforts to the production of a single perfect food. That's all well and good, but man cannot live on raw carrots alone. Have you considered cooking them? You mean steaming, boiling, roasting and the like? I suppose we could prepare the carrots in other ways. But our primary concern was efficiency, and what's more efficient than sinking your teeth into a carrot fresh from production? A rather strange approach to take for one named Cooking Way, isn't it? Well, technically speaking, Cooking Way isn't my given name. When first created, we were all named in the old tongue. You know, that, that otherwise impenetrable parlance the Watcher speaks. After we received a great tome of words, a dictionary, that is. From our collaborators, we learned your language. Adverbs, gerunds, present continuous verb conjugations. Just the basics. <laughs> I'm not... Then we found the terms related to our given tasks and used them to form new names. Aren't they helpful? No, not really, but it does explain a great deal. Wherefore did Zykind deem such a change necessary? When the rest of your people arrive, we want to be certain they understand immediately what each of us does. You'd never be able to pronounce our original names anyway. I see. I hope our critiques, such as they are, were helpful to you. Though, if you should decide to preserve flora and fauna from Ethereus as well, you would be able to offer the passengers a more balanced diet. Until such a day, one I pray comes sooner than later, it would appear there is naught but carrots on the menu. <laughs> oh my god okay 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 I'm cooking way hungry for my carrots fear not you can eat to your heart's content after you've seen the rest of the best ways burrow thank red i hate to admit it but i did rather like the carrots 
<laughs> Oriange. Hmm. Ishtola? While I'm sure the Lopras would hop at the chance to expound upon carrots in exhaustive detail, perhaps it's time we moved on? Who is my party mate? Um, fighting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Styled a hero, Living Way is eager to show you more of the moon's wonders. I think we've had our fill of carrots for now. Let's move on to other necessities, shall we? Our closing production is sure to impress. This way. Oh lord, okay, uh... Oh. <laughs> I'm being spoiled. <laughs> Literally carried. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I... I don't know what to think right now. We just went from epic moon battle... Uh, killing Zodiac... Uh, almost facing off with Xenos, having to deal with Fandaniel... And suddenly this... And suddenly we're here. It's like it's so schizophrenic. I, I or I don't know. Maybe it's a welcome break. Or <laughs> I love it. I love Thancred. It's hardly sun silk tapestries, but perhaps we'll be pleasantly surprised. Ishtola, do you suppose the clothes they prepared will be as grossly oversized as the carrots? I have a feeling they will. Oyanje, garments born of the heavens, crafted with methods ancient and forgotten, dress befitting we who walk in shade, stewards of the esoteric. All right, buddy. Living way. Here we are, the apparel production station. We've chosen to employ more traditional methods for this task, creation magics. Heidelin, in her infinite wisdom, blessed us with the self-same affinity for magic her people possessed. We have other amazing talents, of course, and I know you're dying to hear about them, but I will regale you with the details another time. That said, we did run into a spot of trouble at first. Our magic alone was not sufficient to see our work done. In the end, we discovered crystallized aether was a wonderful catalyst that could provide us with the extra feast we needed. My, how resourceful! Ah, the sweet sound of recognition. You will also be impressed to hear we've read all about your habit of changing attire to match your chosen profession. For the sake of, effic of efficiency, I presume, this has also been taken into account with our designs. But why take my word for it when you can simply try on our clothes? Make yourselves known to the workers and they will see to the rest. Is it glam time? Are we getting glam? <laughs> Are we getting glam? <laughs> the most, you know, FF14 true endgame? Okay, where am I supposed to go? Up there? Oh shit, there's some mobs. There are mobs down there. I would like to avoid them, please. Do not like. I would like to avoid a fight right now. Restless Lopperit. Ah! It's you, one of the visitors from Aceris. Goodness me, Mapping Way wasn't kidding. You really are smaller than the Watcher. Oh, right, you're here to try on a set of clothes, yes? What would you have me fashion for you today? An outfit that embodies my bloodlust. Something simple, yet functional. A fashionable and refined ensemble. My party mate just... A fashionable and refined ensemble. Fashionable. Right. I'm scared. Ahem, this will only take a moment. I'm scared. <laughs> what is this? Is it just me or anything you ask for they're gonna give you the same shit? There we are, all 
well finished. A perfect fit, if I do say so myself. I'll be honest, I know nothing of fashion, let alone fashion and theorists, but I'd wager no one down there has ever worn anything like this fine ensemble. Perhaps you can start a new trend. Would you look at that? Speechless. And there I thought you may not like it. If you've a mind to try something else, why not speak with my fellow artisans? I'm sure they'd be happy to oblige. You must continue wearing these garments in order to progress. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> oh my god. I can't. You will change back to your normal garments if you move too far away. Look to your map for the garment changes area of effect. Speak with the rest of Slopper to restore or prolong the garment change. <laughs> I hate it. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, where are the other people that we should be speaking to? Where, where are the other... <laughs> Where are the other <laughs> lover hits we should be talking to? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, here is the other platform, perhaps. <laughs> is it this way? Yeah, I see it. I see it. Jubilant lover hit. <laughs> this is so <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, 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 okay. A jubilant lopper it. Ah, uh, no one said you'd be coming. Uh, how can I help you? You wish to try my clothes? Really? Of course. It would be my honor. Did you have anything in mind? Go... got anything with a little more... Uh, flair? I'm looking for clothes with an altogether different design. Surprise me! Oh god. Uh, maybe something with a little more flair. Uh, I, I think I can handle that. Let's see. Oh no. This should do! I'm scared. I'm very scared and worried. <laughs> What the fuck is this? What, is, what? What? Oh my god! Some of my best work yet. Times and tastes truly have changed. It used to be so rare for anyone to request clothing with a focus on form over function. Thankfully, I had a spare concept for robes made using a different fabric. I think it looks rather fetching. What am I wearing? I was worried how the concept would turn out when you put on the proof, but it looks stunning on you. Won't you go and show Livingway? I'm sure she's eager to see what we've come up with. You must continue wearing these garments in order to progress. Oh god! <laughs> oh my god! This is not better. This is not better. <laughs> Here's someone who doesn't even normally care about, like, glams, but... <laughs> He's not happy. <laughs> Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh my god, this is true. <laughs> it's so ugly. <laughs> this is driving me nuts. Okay, okay, okay. <sighs> Alright, one more, one more. 
<laughs> One more. Living way, we gotta talk. My, don't we look splendid? The result of much trial and error, but I know quality work when I see it. Shh, you needn't speak. I can see your adoration for the moon and we lopperets in your eyes. No doubt your friends feel the same having sampled our creations. I... I think you're still that's gonna have a problem with this. Considering she asked for a fashionable coat. What is this? What is happening? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> they insisted we sample all of their concepts ere we, ere we returned. Verily, it is an ensemble most becoming. And he even posed. Oh, Andre, we need to talk. <laughs> I think it's past time we returned these clothes. <laughs> I was so confident our garments would meet with your approval. <sighs> Whatever are we doing wrong? The Watcher taught us that, in his time, everyone wore the same robes. To do otherwise was against social etiquette. We thought we could appeal to modern tastes by tailoring the robes to specific professions, but... Please, you mustn't be so hard on yourself. Should we resort to evacuating the people of Atheris, they will certainly have need of your attire. It is clear you spared no effort in addressing our needs, but you must understand that we are not quite so homogenous. Speaking for myself, what I wear now better suits my tastes, even if it is of inferior make. But there are others whose choices may be influenced by traditions or personal experience. Rather than make assumptions for the whole, you must consider the individual and their potential preferences. I fear we've underestimated the complexity and diversity of your people. Ah, even if we'd memorized every tome we received, I doubt we'd have fared much better. Maybe we're doing you a disservice, trying to shower you with our baubles and frippery, thinking it was for, for your benefit when you'd be better off on your own. There are some who might agree. People who prefer to keep others at arm's length, even when they know they shouldn't. As one such former fool, I'd like to ask you a question. This plan to evacuate and escape the final days, did it account for the reflections of the source as well? Oh dear. Um, not that I'm aware of. We were born of Hydaelyn's love for Aetherius, and the salvation of the people on that star and that star alone has ever been our aim. Surely it's better to, to devote ourselves to saving one world than to divide our efforts across fourteen and risk failing them all. I suppose you're right. He's thinking about Reen. Living way, might we have leave to explore Bestway's burrows unattended? You have given us much to think about. Why, certainly. Until later, then. If I may, I should like to accompany thee a while longer. Really? I mean, you're more than welcome to. There was actually something I wished to speak with you about. Let's be off, then, shall we? Mm, what about me? Uh, I guess I'm left to my own devices. Okay. Fidgeting Lopperit. Hmm. What is it, little one? <laughs> oh, 
Sanjay, I have many questions. Uh, my apologies. I wasn't trying to spy or anything. Everyone's been talking about the visitors come from Etherius, and I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. I was excited at first, but now... now I'm worried. What if the people of Etherius refuse to come? What if we can't save them? Ah, it's clear we've made a mess of things. Oh, but wait, you still haven't visited the domiciles. Once you see them, you'll understand how wonderful the moon truly is, I'm sure of it. I'll be waiting for you by the teleporter near the entrance. Oh, and the name's Growing Way, by the way. See you soon. Okay. <laughs> let's... <laughs> let's go there, I guess. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this has been so... This has been a wild ride. <laughs> What in fucking hell? Okay. Growing way. You're here! You're really here! Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, what should I call you? Alexia Solaris, eh? Crikey, even your names are amazing. Well, Alexia, we'll be using this teleporter to enter the residential area. Whenever you're ready. Um, residential area? What? What? Ready in the teleporter. Okay. Beam me up, Scotty. Didn't work. What's wrong? Huh? Access to living quarters restricted due to reconstruction. Then where is it? Oh no! Where did you send me off to? Oh no, indeed! <laughs> where the fuck the is this? audience, as thou didst request. For reasons I know not. Huh? What's going on, Rianche? Just a precaution. I'd rather I didn't have to ask the question at all, but I take my responsibilities very, very seriously. Do you and your friends by any chance find our accommodation wanting? Be honest, brutally even. It would be ungracious of me to belittle the efforts of the Indine. sentiment, really, but the disappointment is writ plain on your comrades' faces. It's all the more frustrating since no one will come out and say what they find wanting. If there are faults in our work, we need to know. We can, we will do better. But time is not on our side. The final days will wait for no one. If your people are to be saved, we must take quick and decisive action. This vessel must serve as a home for as many passengers as possible for far longer than we may like. Which brings me to my request. Our collaborators on Atheris are doing what they can to prepare for the voyage. Would you be willing to go and lend them a hand? Wait a minute, we collaborators, so you mean Charlian? Is it Charlian? Having seen the moon for yourself, you could speak to its many splendors, learn what else they might require, and assuage whatever concerns they have. Wherefore wouldst thou entrust me with such a task? How to put it? You're the only one who appears not to be wholly unsatisfied with our work. I'm so sorry! I'm sorry! Oh, quite good at pretending that's the case, at least. Calm, collected, 
tactful to a fault. Very particular with your words, too. That he is. You understand oh. that in the face of great danger, one cannot pursue perfection at the expense of practicality. The difficult choices must often be made for the greater good. Oh dear. Uh, and so oh. fate doth conspire to set my feet upon this path once more. Uh. Come again? Ah. Uh. Idle musings. Tis no trifle, thou dost ask. Yet full well do I understand the urgency and necessity. I... Oh, dear me! Dear me! I was terribly sorry for the mix-up! <laughs> it's a bit of a malfunction. I hadn't realized the residential quarters were inaccessible, you see. But you're still in one piece. So, all's well that ends well, yes? Uh, won't happen again. I promise. <laughs> oh. I wasn't supposed to be here, huh? Oh dear. What were you going to say, Oriange? <laughs> What were you about to say? Gosh, that was embarrassing. I promise to be more careful from now on. Since the residential quarters are closed for now, I've rerouted the teleporter to allow travel between floors instead. Hopefully it proves useful in the meantime. Uh, a shame you couldn't see it though. You really would have liked it. Okay, then. You can now travel between the upper and lower floors of Best Way Borough via the teleporter. Oh, God. All's fail that ends fail. Growing Way is keen to put his recent mishap behind him. It may not seem like it, but we've been planning for this far longer than I'd care to admit. Each time we woke up, we'd have long discussions about how to save as many of you as we can, Felt like everyone had an opinion on this or that. But the one thing we all agreed upon was that the people of Etherius wouldn't take action to save themselves until it was far too late. Ouch. That's why we're striving to make the moon a vibrant, magical place they'd hop at the, at the chance to visit, rather than waiting for the flames of oblivion to get them off the, their tails and force them to accept our invitation. The residential quarters may not be up to the necessary standards just yet, but there are plenty of other places worth seeing. You've already had a look around the Caratorium, but wait until you see what's waiting for you at the east end of the borough. Follow me! I'm scared. <laughs> okay then! And is there another current here? To the east. Okay, okay. Wait, it's down? Can I? Honestly, can I just jump? Oh, fuck! <laughs> I'm gonna die! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> what <One> HP! <laughs> Ow, that hurt! Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I jumped from the top. Let's not do that again. <gasps> Where? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> okay, he's already elsewhere. <laughs> Good, you're here. Through this door is Greatest End's Veil. Vale. It was named as such because it's the veil to end all veils. The most beautiful forest you'll ever see. We understand the people of Viserys enjoy taking leisurely walks through natural spaces and the like, so I'm sure you'll enjoy it. How about we start with a nice stroll to the fountain? This way. Oh god, it's full of mobs, isn't it? Grinding way, reading way. Told you just love books. I absolutely adore them. They taught me so much. Don't tell anyone, but they also taste delicious. 
<laughs> Grinding way. Do these floors look clean to you? I don't know. I feel like they could use a little more polishing. Huh? Oh my goodness. Oh my god! <gasps> are those mobs? I think those are mobs. Why there are mobs about, I will never know. Uh, are they part of the amusement? Maybe? <laughs> also is that... No, they're not either, right? They're just sliding. Found? Well, that's really pretty. So, what did you think of the forest? Isn't it positively, positively pleasant? Simply sublime? This isn't a forest. <laughs> I couldn't see the forest or the trees. I didn't see any... Wait, you don't mean those crystals out there are... Tis as transcendent as burying your face in the Jacobo's plumage and taking a good long whiff. You mean it stinks? <laughs> um, you're pulling my tail. You're in the forest right now. Building this place was a challenge, let me tell you. Since we were born here, we've never seen trees in person before, let alone a forest. The information sent by our collaborators was quite enlightening, but after much deliberation, we decided to use crystalline constructs in place of living trees. And thanks to our atmospheric circulation system, this place produces air as clean as you'd, fi as you'd find in, in a forest in Aetherius. The fountain here behind us, powered by the rather large crystal adorning its top, plays a vital role in supplying us with fresh water. Much time and effort was spent making it the most spherical of spheres, and I dare say the unparalleled roundness speaks for itself. Is this... A reference to Saliak or something? I enjoy nothing more than a nice long stretch and a spot of relaxation whenever I come up here. You look like you could do with a stretch yourself. Uh. Okay. So we stretch. That's the spirit. I feel more relaxed simply watching you. A sight worth the many years spent building this place. Oh no. If it's not too much to ask, it's always been a dream of mine to take a walk through this forest with someone from Aetherius. Could we maybe? Oh no. It's another escort walk with me quest. There's so many. You will? Oh, be still my quivering whiskers. Growing Way is now accompanying you. <laughs> Alright. So, over there? Maybe we will not get attacked by these things. <laughs> is this supposed to be an approximation of grass I was thinking Alexia that I could be more helpful to you by teaching you a little about the moon and what it is we do when we were first created the moon's sole purpose was to hold zodiac and there was absolutely nothing to be found here eventually Heidelin gave us our first task furnish the moon with propulsion systems capable of facilitating travel to other stars it sounds impressive, and I suppose in some respects it is, but it was only possible thanks to all the knowledge Heidelin shared with us. We also had a lot of time to get it done. 6,000 years, give or take. But anyway, let's keep going. Okay... What is that, and what is this? The 
This may come as a surprise, but we didn't begin building the habitable areas until after the propulsion systems were ready. Considering how long it took, I wish we'd started sooner. Who would have thought we'd need 4,000 years to make all this? It certainly wasn't work you dare rush either. We had to create infrastructure and countless supporting systems, some of which wouldn't be operational until hundreds of years later. And then there was that brief period where our productivity came to a screeching halt. When that bizarre red satellite was sent up from Aetherius, the Alligan's mischief, I think. We thought maybe some new nefarious actor was colluding with Zodiac. All we could do was stand by and brace ourselves for the worst. I can't tell you how relieved we were when Heidel informed us of its destruction. Oh yes, there was much joyous humming that day. Uh, what is this? Why is it glowy? Ask if you could taste the rainbow. <laughs> taste the rainbow. <gasps> no, I'm scared. <laughs> oh, look, why can't I like it? <gasps> what? No, I'm not sure what it is you do with crystals in the Theris, but we don't eat them, and certainly, certainly not this one. It's possessed of all six elements. Wind, lightning, fire, earth, ice, and water. We use crystals like these to maintain the moon's elemental equilibrium. It's worth mentioning, though, that because of Heidelin's influence, being the embodiment of tranquility and stasis and all, manipulating the elements here is different than it might be on Aetherius. I don't know what fight <laughs> he's in right now. It's changing my background music. Gonna have to turn that off for a while. A conjuring of fire would sooner dry your clothes than cinch them, for example. Put simply, the etheric conditions are ill-suited to growth, which is why the surface is mostly barren. Of course, this was all necessary to keep the raging energies of Zodiac in check. Okay. We'll keep moving. Do you notice anything peculiar about the treetops? I mean, apart from the fact that they're massive crystals and not trees. I'll give you a hint. It's the golden rings emanating from the glowing spheres. Huh. Along with the device fixed near the ceiling, they fulfill a role similar to our sun, and do so better, even. The sun and similar celestial objects in the Great Expanse radiate energy that is harmful to your bodies. These rings shield you from that energy while allowing you to bathe in the perfect amount of sunlight, or rather, a close approximation of it. Pretty impressive, wouldn't you say? Oh, and if you look closely, you'll see different types of trees have ever so slightly different curvature. Yes, indeed, the forest truly is the greatest. Oh no, how do I... <laughs> how to explain to you? <laughs> Can we just please stay the fuck away from these guys? Um... There was something else I wanted to tell you about. Uh, oh, right. The propulsion, the propulsion systems and habitat facilities were completed around 2,000 years ago, and with that, the most important features were fit for purpose. Which was all well and good, except we still knew absolutely nothing about the present-day people of Aetherius. Why not go and visit Aetherius yourself, you might ask? Strictly forbidden. Were our technology or knowledge of the moon's true purpose exploited for evil ends, the results could be disastrous. Then there were a few more rejoinings, and it became increasingly difficult to converse with Heidelin. Fearful we might lose the ability to communicate with her altogether, we beseeched her to find people in Aetherius who we could trust to help. 
we were quite fortunate everything worked out as it did. Uh, not quite sure. Fortunate would be a good way to put it. <laughs> All right. Man, I've been recording for three and a half hours. Might need to wrap this up soon. With the exception of routine inspections and maintenance, we remained asleep and waited. Hopeful Heidelin would find someone who would help us. Eventually, she did. And though her power was waning, we were able to speak to them directly for a short while. We shared with them everything we could, including our knowledge of the heavens and a means to travel here to the moon. They certainly didn't waste any time with what we taught them. No more than a few years after that, our collaborators found a means to convey messages and supplies to us from down below. With all the letters, books, and other resources they sent, we learned enough to start making more meaningful changes to the moon. And now you're here, hopefully enjoying yourself as much as I am. I knew you would like Kratos and Svail. I knew it. Thank you again for coming here, by the way. I know it was just a walk through the forest, but it meant a lot to me. There you are. I take it you've already received the grand tour. A shame we missed it. Growing way, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, I... Ah, uh, is this about the teleporter to the residential area? No, never mind that. We have more pressing matters at hand. I will be calling an emergency meeting shortly, and your attendance is required. Really? I can't imagine why you'd need me there, but if you insist... <laughs> Let me turn the music back on now that the battle is over. We won't be away long, so you all are more than welcome to continue looking about the burrow. Now come along, Growing Way. Mm. Before we arrived, you seemed to be in the midst of a rousing conversation with your guide. Did you learn anything of import? Yeah. They've spent 12,000 years preparing for this? With the appointed hour fast approaching, I can certainly understand their, their restlessness. But still, it remains to be seen if the people can be persuaded to evacuate when there are yet no signs of the final days. What's more, the technology of this place defies imagination. I doubt there are many who would readily come to terms with living in such surroundings. Whoever these collaborators are, unless they are possessed of the world's most charming personalities or a means to forcibly evacuate people, they will meet with a great deal of resistance. Indeed, even if faced with annihilation, the decision to forsake all one knows cannot be made lightly. Forgive me, friends, but I must beg your leave. There is another matter which your which yet begs for mine attention. Of course, we can accompany you if you like. Hmm. Nay, that will not be necessary, if you will excuse me. What are you up to? Ugh. Thancred? Huh, what do you suppose he suddenly has suddenly tickled his fancy? Ishtola? Tis clear now that difficult decisions lie ahead of us. Preparation for the evacuation of Aetherius is indeed crucial, but I am not yet willing to forsake our world in its reflections, and I trust I am not alone in my reticence. The final days will make brave fools of us all. <laughs> You know what? I have been recording for like three and a half hours and I'm starting to get pretty tired. So I think I'm just going to hang around here with uh, Daddy Sancred and Mama Yustola. So. <laughs> so for 
this seems like a good place to stop for now. <laughs> it was a wild ride. Started, It started from... Oh god, do I even remember? Like, uh, It started with sadness and spirits and lost spirits. Golden dogs. Defeating Zodiac. And now rabbits. And carrots of extraordinary length and girth. I, I don't even know what to think anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna go take a break. <laughs> Thank you, and I guess I'll see you in video number 10. So, laters. <laughs>